Mina, konbonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Judges chapter 4, interesting little topic here. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. It's just like, yeah, forget the introduction. I'm just going to jump right into it. Chapter 4, verse 4. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah. She had a palm tree named after her, I'm guessing. Between Ramah and Bethel and the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And then you jump down to verse... Well, actually, no. In order to get the full story, I'll go ahead and keep on reading here. Go back up to verse 6. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops in Mount Tabor, take with you ten thousand men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, <clears throat> excuse me, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Interesting point here. I mentioned, um, I forget when, at some point in the past, like, you know, don't underestimate the ladies. They can have callings of God, too. They can be mighty in the Lord as well. They can do awesome things for the Lord our God. And here we have a woman in a clear position of leadership, a prophetess and a judge over the house of Israel. So, and now judges weren't elected, um, and they weren't necessarily all prophets either. Judge was its own unique position. It was basically someone who guided all of Israel in the judgments of the Lord, whether it be through a direct prophetic gifting, apparently what Deborah had, or just, you know, plain good old wisdom and knowledge of the Torah or the law of Moses. So we have a woman here that is clearly in a leadership role. Now, I don't know how that exactly flows over to the New Testament with the whole Paul talking about, I don't, women, I don't permit women to um, teach in church or to have authority over men. I'm a little bit more old school in that sense, and if that offends you, I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. i much rather have God's approval than yours. I love you very much, but I've got to go by the Word of God. So I'm not going to just offhand say, yeah, let women do whatever they want in the church. There appear to be some restrictions, and I'm not sure exactly how it flows correctly. I'm still learning. But to say women can't have any leadership at all would clearly be wrong. This woman had a lot of leadership and a lot of authority in the house of Israel at that time. So I'm still learning. I'm on my journey. I'm still on the way. What I do know is that this is one more testament to the fact that women can absolutely have power in the body of Christ. Um, I don't believe that this is something where like Paul just shut down the women and this is one rare circumstance where a woman was put in charge. I don't, I don't believe that Paul shut down women's ministry in the New Testament. I think he limited it. Whether those limits should apply today or not, I'm not completely and totally sure. At the moment, I think there are some limitations. But I do believe that the Old Testament precedent set by Deborah, I think that still stands. Women, there are some women called of God that do have authority, that do have power, that should be listened to, who obviously hear from the Lord and are called of the Lord. And to ignore that gifting and to ignore that authority the Lord's given them, that would be a crippling blow to the church. It would be very bad to try to silence these women or to put, you know, to pigeonhole them or put them on the shelf, that would be very, very bad. Obviously, God respects women. He cares about them and doesn't mind giving them leadership roles. I don't exactly know what that entails, but apparently some women should be in leadership of some kind. It's right there. So you're very welcome for the complete and total ambiguity that I just <laughs> spewed forth out of my mouth. I meant this to be encouraging, and hopefully it was. Um, obviously, my own lack of knowledge shows through and shines through here. When I have an update, when I know what the deal is, or at least I think I know what the deal is, I'll let y'all know. I know that women are to be in authority like under their husbands, and I know Paul didn't permit women to speak in church. 
Maybe we should permit them. Maybe Paul was wrong. Maybe that was his call and not God's. I do believe that sometimes Paul spoke for himself and not for God, even in written scripture. 1 Corinthians 7 being a very clear example where he says, I say, not the Lord. Obviously, he's saying this isn't a command from God. This is my opinion. So again, I'm still learning, I'm still studying, and hopefully this doesn't come across as just me rambling a bunch of ridiculousness. Hopefully it comes across that I understand women should have authority, I understand that sometimes Paul spoke for himself, and I've already acknowledged I don't know everything and I'm okay with that. So I'm taking you guys along with me on this journey. And hopefully for some people who have who are kind of like against women having any authority in the church at all. Hopefully a few of those people will watch this video, read this chapter in the Bible and say, you know what, maybe I need to rethink that. Maybe women should have some kind of positions in the church. Maybe there is a realm and a sphere in which women can walk in the power and authority of God in their lives and in the church corporately as well. Because obviously there is a place for them. So at least take that from this. Hopefully that was encouraging and not horribly rambly. I know it was a little bit, but hopefully not horribly. I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching. God bless.